Hey, Happy New Year, everybody. You looking forward to 2018? All right. Hey, let me ask you a question. If you're excited about 2018, but you know, I was wondering, well, what did you get for Christmas? Christmas. What, did, how many, did, did, did anybody get a, a new car for Christmas? No? You got all the <laughs> How about new clothes? Anybody new clothes? Uh, you guys got to work with me. Come on. <laughs> well, how about a new attitude? <laughs> hey, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I was going through the Facebook. I, I saw this picture. I don't know if we can, we can see this picture here on, on the screen. I saw this picture. It's one of those pictures from some people who had a lot of times on their hands. And, and, and they post them on, on Facebook. And uh, here, here's a picture. I may look like my daddy, but I have my mama's attitude. <laughs> All right. What a great way to start the new year. I heard a story about a Scotsman who was such a hard worker. And he was just, he just worked night and day, just working hard, and, and he expected all the men under him to work like him. You know, and, and, and so then the men would tease him now and then, and they would come to him at the coffee break, and he would say to them, You know, Mr. Scotsman, Rome was not built in, in a day. And then Scotsman looked at the, the man and he said, yeah, I know that, but I wasn't the foreman on that job. <laughs> That's an attitude. <laughs> Boy, we can have that attitude as we move on. That will be great. And the other thing was I was talking to a group of people last night. We, we had a child dedication uh, at the Mike Hotel last night. I was with a bunch of guys there and I was asking them, you know, how many of you get that new smart speaker called Google Home. Yeah? Oh, I got a couple of them there. Those of you who have no friends, <laughs> rejoice. Now you got a friend. I can just see myself buying one of those. Because I, I understand it can store informations. That I can leave it right beside me and I can store my anniversary date in that thing. <laughs> You know, and then my kids' birthdays. And I can just say, hey Google, what's my wife's birthday again? <laughs> that, that would be a great thing. You know, and I can talk to that thing. I never thought there would be a day when I would be talking to a bunch of wires. And, and, and uh, the good thing about it is you have absolute control of that friend. You know, if you don't like it, and then you just put it on the other side and leave it there. But it's great to have our time together. And my point actually saying this is this. We all love new things, don't we? Yeah. We all love new things. And uh, tomorrow is the beginning of a new year. And I cannot wait to give it a run for its money. <laughs> yeah. It's an awesome year, it's coming, I can't wait. It's an opportunity for a fresh start. It's a new beginning. Hey, listen, aren't you tired of the old you? It's all quiet. You know, like having the same story, the same scripture you memorized how many years ago, you're still memorizing that same scripture. The same song that you, you know that new song? That was an awesome song. Like, wow, talk about a new song. That was awesome. Reminds you of how our Lord came to this world. Thank God he did not stay in the manger. <laughs> he grew up. Ultimately, he went to the cross for us. But... It's time to start anew, don't you think? Right. Start anew. Create new story for yourself. Sing a new song. Have a new example of God changing your life. Read a new portion of scripture this year. You know, start with First and Second Chronicles. And after you finish that, read Leviticus. Like different, different part of them. Minimize your time reading somebody else's po post on Facebook. Just 
just start reading stuff, new song, a new portion or passage of scripture that you can read. Shoot, ask God for a new problem in your life. <laughs> How about a new issue? So that somebody else can look at you someday and say, hey, well, it's a good thing he doesn't have the same issue, but he got new issues now. <laughs> They will come, amen? Those issues will come. I mean, when we wake up tomorrow morning, I'm going to wake up with great anticipation because 2018 is coming and it's going to be different. It's going to be different for me. And to use the baseball analogy, you are going, you know, tomorrow as we usher in 2018, you are going into the mountain of life and hopefully you're going to throw some strikes in life. They may not all be strikes. You may be throwing some curve balls. Some wild pitch. But stand on God's word and keep changing. It's a new year. In fact, our text this morning in Isaiah chapter 43. Let me read those three, verses 16 to 19. This is what the Lord says. He who made a way through the sea... A path through the mighty waters, who drew out the chariots and horses, the army and reinforcements together, and they lay there, never to rise again, extinguished, snuffed out like a wick. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs up. It's already happening. <laughs> the new thing is already happening. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. Love those promises of God's word. Thank you, Lord, for your word. What an awesome promise to usher us into the new year. Bless your word to your people. Thanking you for what you are going to do through our time together. In Jesus' name, amen. Our text this morning in Isaiah chapter 43 comes as a powerful promise to God's people at a very bleak time in the nation's history. Because out of disobedience and sin, the nation was divided. And the people was living in idolatry. They were, they were in captivity. They have lost everything they thought they would keep forever. And because of sin and disobedience, they end up in captivity. And in the midst of their darkness, God promised them something beautiful through the prophet Isaiah. Here it is, the gift of a new beginning. A fresh start. I want to present to you three realities in relation to the gift of new beginning. Three words so it's easy for you to remember. If you're going to embrace... A new beginning. The first word is reposition. The second word is recognize. And the third word is anticipate. So let's go back with point number one. Reposition ourselves in verses 16 to 18. In fact, if we're going to embrace the gift of new beginning, I would ask us that we need and we must reposition ourselves. In fact, it says to reposition oneself is to move in a different position, to have a different focus. Verses 16 to 18, very interesting. When the prophet Isaiah said, he, he reminded the people how God has been so active in the life of his people. So he pointed them back to the Exodus. When God delivered them out of slavery. When God parted the Red Sea and created dry grounds so that the people can walk to the other side and be safe from the relentless pursuing of the army of Pharaoh. Then notice what he said. When he reminded them, hey, I know God has been so active in your life. Then he said these words. Forget the former things. And do not dwell in the past. In other words, folks, reposition yourself. Change your focus. Why did you think he said that? 
Because he knows that we are prone to hold on to the past so tightly. Stop that, he said. Start looking ahead. While God has been active in the past, we realize that. He's been so great to you. He parted the Red Sea. You walked through it. You went to the other side. God has been so active to you in the past. But listen, he did not remain there and neither should you. And he remind us in this thing. See, here is the thing. When we are holding on to the past, listen, when we are holding on to the past, we undervalue the gift of the present. And we don't eagerly anticipate the opportunity of the future. And I'm not saying that the past has no value or law. Please don't misunderstand me. I keep telling this story about when I was growing up in the islands, beside our house, that there was a big breadfruit tree. But the Pacific Islands, as you know from the Philippines, you know cyclone has been part of our lives out in, that, in, in the tropics. And as I was growing up, this big breadfruit tree, some of you know, what, if you don't know, Google it. Go to Google, find Google home. <laughs> Google, tell me what is a breadfruit tree. But as we were growing up, this tree bears so much fruit, and we would go and pick those fruit, and that fruit would provide meal for 12, 13 kids. There were 13 of us all together in the family. And so we would pick that every year, we picked fruit out of that tree. And one day, there was a huge cyclone that hit the island, and that tree just came broken, all the branches were broken down. I remember what my dad said. He said to our sons, go to that tree, pick all the remaining fruit on that breadfruit tree, and burn the rest. The past is valuable for us. There is so much value to it. But like that breadfruit tree, pick the fruit out of it and burn the tree. Learn from it. See, you cannot see the future clearly if you don't have the lessons of the past to stand on. So we need to bring the past in. If you have experienced the good work of the Lord in the past 12 months, great. Celebrate it. Take what you have learned. Move forward. Pick the fruit. And move forward. There is a new path to walk, ladies and gentlemen. A new path has been created. There is a new story to be written. Just remember, as we just came through the Christmas story, that little baby Jesus did not stay a baby. The little manger scene, he did not stop there. Because a brand new story was about to be written. Jesus Christ came to earth. He helped people. He went to the brokenhearted to bring hope to the people. He went to the cross to pay the penalty of death that is due yours and mine. So whatever sin you have committed in the past, whatever pain that you have experienced, whatever loss or brokenness you have experienced, can I tell you good news? Your sins have been nailed to the cross. Sin no longer defines you. The scriptures say there is now no condemnation to those who have put their faith in God. Because at the very heart of the gospel is what Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a what? He's a new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. So forget the former things. Don't dwell on them. I say it to myself. When you look at the future, be close-minded about the past. Reposition yourself. Embrace the gift of new beginning, a fresh new start. Paul said in Philippians chapter 3, verse 13, Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, this one thing I do, not this many ten things that I dabble in. 
forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead. Because Paul is saying, no matter what I have done in the past, I cannot live on yesterday. You cannot live on 2017's prayer life, folks. You cannot live on last week, last year's blessings. Learn the lesson from Isaiah to his people. Yes, God has been so good to you in the past 12 months. He's been active in your life and in the life of this church. But he did not remain there and neither should we. There's a path to walk. There's a new beginning to embark on. And take that, that trip. And secondly... We find, as we embrace the new beginning, secondly, recognize what God is doing. Don't stay in the past. Past is important. You've got to stand in the past so that you have a clear direction of the future. See, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? Question. How do you recognize or perceive what God is doing in your life? Can I be discerning here in response? Here's the first thing. Get out of the way. It's not quite hermeneutically uh, proper wordsmithing. I don't care, but that's the point. Number one is get out of the way. Did you know that the reason that you cannot see what God is doing in your life and in the life of this body is because self is in the way? Can I tell you good news? It's not about you. Paul learned this lesson in Galatians chapter 2 verse 20. I have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless I live yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. The life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. The apostle John testified to that truth in John chapter 3 verse 30. Here's what he said. He must become greater. I must become less. Sometimes we don't see what is going on because so much of the self is in the way. Crucify that self. Allow it to come under the instructions of the cross. So get out of the way. Do you want to see what God, because sometimes you don't see, you know, I have been very discerning and seeing how God is working in this body in these last few years, and I watched many of you have growing in your faith in the Lord. Of that, I am so proud of you. And you continue to do and continue to grow and make sure that the obstacle of self is not in the way so you can see what God is doing. But he is doing a new thing in this body. And you have to perceive it. We have to recognize it. So first thing is get out of the way. Secondly, follow hard after God. Live your life in the power of the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. You shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost come upon you. You know, you hang around the Holy Spirit long, you're going to come out empowered. People will notice it. Mosaic, live your life in the power of the Holy Spirit. Let him change you. Let him be in the place that, Lord, keep changing me. Keep working in me. Let your light shine in me. And through my brokenness, shine through me. Ask the Lord to give you a fresh, a fresh anointing. Ask him to give you fresh miracles. A fresh attitude. Regularly read and feed yourself with the word. Continue to pray without ceasing. Continue to grow in your faith. That is the only way you can perceive what God is doing in your life. Amen. 
Tomorrow is a new day. And you know you're going to have celebration tomorrow. I trust you'll make right choices. But, make, but enjoy tomorrow. Enjoy the, the celebration. But the next day, guess what? You're going back to the same job that you had last year. But hear me out. But now, you are going with a new attitude. You're going with a new spirit. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> you're going with a new anointing. That's what you're going to be doing. That's an evidence you have been hanging around the Holy Spirit. Go in there and make something happen. Because a new thing is on the way. It's already happening. That's what God is saying. We have a vision at this church to community, to, to impact this community with the love of God so that we can witness people who are made alive in Christ Jesus. And folks, the only way we are going to see what's happening is when you allow the Spirit of God, Lord, keep changing me day in, day out. Change me, not my spouse. I, I, <laughs> the wives are not laughing at all. <laughs> God, change me, change me, not my spouse. Change me, not my co workers. Change me, not my friends. Because you see, we have the tendency to look at others and expect to change them. Yeah. Yeah. It's so easy to point out people's flaws and expect them to change. You cannot expect others to change if you are not prepared to change yourself first. You see, when there is change in you in me, there is change in others. Don't, don't, don't. It's easy to point. Hey, can you change? No. Point back at you. I must change. I must change. And Mosaic, people don't come to just Listen to this. People don't come to this church because we have a cool, although we have a cool, awesome worship. People don't not come because of the D group or we have snacks after service. I get you not, but they, are play, they play a huge part. But hear me out. Do you know what will make people take notice of you? Change life. Right. Your life being changed, nobody can argue with a changed life. Mm -hmm. Nobody. And there is no explanation for, for it other than Jesus Christ. Self-help books or behavioral transformation cannot do what the gospel can do, which is to transform somebody's soul from inside out. And as we pray, and I've been praying for our church, that God, if we, while as we are entering into the 2018, God is my prayer, God, we must avoid all distractions and stay focused. Right. That's right. Sometimes we get so distracted with issues that challenges our Christian faith. This is a challenge to me. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying we should not be concerned about so many things that attacks the Christian faith. But I'm here to tell, to tell you, that sometimes we're so pulled in all directions and we forget that the lives of men and women in this city hangs in the balance. Paul said in Philippians chapter 3, this one thing I do. We must stay focused, Mosaic, and what God has called us to do. Let's not be so distracted, pulled apart. You know, if you're going to fight, pick the right battle. Right. Sometimes we've got so many fights on our hands. And we begin to lose focus on what we were there in the first place. We need to see that, you know, one day Jesus was healing a man who had never walked, experienced what it's like to walk. And then Jesus healed him. The guy got up and he, with his mat and he walked. 
and the religious people came, you know what they did? They didn't say, oh wow, look at that guy, he walked. That's awesome. That's not what they said. Do you know what they said? They went to Jesus. Hey, uh, do you know what day this is? This is the Sabbath. Um, really? A guy just walked. You're looking at him and said, hey, you did this on the Sabbath. That's what I mean sometimes we get to pick the wrong fights. And nobody saw that this man walked for the very first time. Yeah. And we need to understand that as we come to 2018. Because the good news of the gospel is that we are all sinners. Without the grace of God, we are sentenced to death. Because of Jesus, everybody deserves to hear about this good news. That is why we cannot afford to be distracted. And the reason we exist here is because the men and women's soul hangs in the balance. And God has given us the heart and the love to go out and make an impact in this community. And we must not be distracted 2018. There'll be a lot of fights. There'll be a lot of battles. There'll be a lot of bumps on the road, on the path. You pray for the leadership team. That as we continue to lead you in 2018, that we will not get distracted and pull all over the direction that, because people will do that. Right. And that is what Satan wants to do to us. To get you all so distracted. Paul said to Timothy, Timothy, fight the good fight. Yeah. By the way, Tim, make sure it's the right one. <laughs> fight the good fight. Run the race that God has commissioned us to run. Because outside these four walls, people are dying without the gospel of Jesus Christ. We must not be distracted. I don't know about you, but I want to look back on my life someday and to say, God, I did what I could do. We care for the people you sent our way. We welcome them in this church. Amen. So embrace the gift of a new beginning. And begin the journey and never forget what God can do with broken people like you and me. That's a new thing that is stirring in my heart. That God forever change me. Keep changing me. Let me hang out with the Holy Spirit long enough to perceive what you're doing in this community. Help me not to be distracted, but to be focused. And lastly, not only that we recognize what God is doing, but anticipate what would happen. I love these verses, these promises. God said to his people, I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. Let me tell you something. 2018, some of you feel like maybe you'll be going to end up in the wilderness. Your life may feel like that there's a desert. And you feel dry. And you feel lost in the wilderness. And you begin to wonder, is this life going to be like for 2018? You know, when I was looking and I was studying those verses, I make, God is saying, I am making a way. I am making a way. He's talking to his people. He's saying to his people, I am making a way. It seems like what God is saying is, hey, I'm inviting you to go on a family trip together with me. He promised that he will make a way in the wilderness. He promised he will cause streams to run in the desert. And that is what 2018 is going to be. We are going to take a family trip together. Are you with me? Yeah. We're going to take that family trip. We may feel like we are in the wilderness. It can be scary. We really don't know what is going to happen, but I know this. God promises people, I will make a way for you in the wilderness. I will provide you with a path. You don't need your GPS. 
You walk in this wilderness, here's what I see this picture saying. You walk in this wilderness, God created the path. Next thing, there's another wilderness. Because it's not saying you go to this wilderness and you stop. There may be another set of wilderness over there. God said, I will make that path clear for you. You just keep alongside the water that is in the desert and you just refresh your soul. Renew yourself with the water that is running in the desert. And I will walk with you. And that's the promise that I see. That we need to keep on walking in the path. And I know I'm not walking on it alone. Because he promised that he will walk with you. Yes, folks, there's going to be bumps on the road. But he will make that path straight for you. You're going to experience dryness in the desert. You may feel like I'm all alone. He will cause water to come out of that desert so that your soul can be refreshed. So keep walking in the path. Keep walking. By the way, you're not the only one. All of us are. If you agree that it's a family trip together for 2018, let's do it together. You know, if one member hurts, we all hurt together. But if there's victory, we'll celebrate victories together. But we're on this family trip. And let the living water refresh your soul in the midst of the desert, even in place we don't anticipate. Let him refresh you. His provision for 2018 is perfect. He will give us what we need to sustain us on this journey. Hear me out. He will sustain this church. He will bring life to his people. He will cause streams of living water to flow. He will hold mosaic together. And he will grow it, not you. So don't worry about how it is going to go. We are not going alone. We are on the path with God and created by God. We are walking along the streams of water in the desert, constantly drinking deeply from God's word, being saturated in prayer, demonstrating the love of one another in the community. He promised to sustain us by producing water in the driest of circumstances. And I conclude. I want to talk to you personally. With the truth of God's word in the background, let me say to you personally, I thank you for being humble. I mean this from the depth of my heart. I want to thank you for being humble and faithful to the mission of God here at Mosaic. Thank you for your dedication and for giving to this work. Whatever you did in the last year, every one of you that called Mosaic home, whatever you did last year, nothing of them was in vain. It was all to the glory of God. And I want you also to know that every change that will take place in 2018, all of that will be with the express desire and purpose of being more effective with the Great Commission as we carry out this commission in this place and to the people that God has called us to do. So join me and embrace the change that will take place in 2018. And I also recognize that in the transition that are to come, there may be a period of grief and mourning because something has ended. And so you are released to, give, to grieve and to mourn and to shed tears. That's okay. But the promise of God says, do not mourn as those who have no hope. Because we have hope in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Here's my theme verse. I have a life verse and a theme verse. Here's my theme verse to close out. And I will ask you to stand with me at close in prayer. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58, I want to close with my theme verse. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourself fully to the Lord. Because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. 
Let me close in prayer and I'll hand over to Pastor John. Bow your head as we pray. Heavenly Father, your word is so good. It continues to be a lamp unto our feet and the light unto our path. Thank you for your presence with us, reminding us that we are not entering the new year alone. We are with you. Oh, Father, we exalt you and lift you higher in this place. What a privilege to worship you. Please be near to our people. We pray specifically for our brother Mark in the hospital. Pray that your spirit will touch his body, Lord. And for the many people that are gathering all over this city today, may the good news of the gospel go forth in power, changing lives for your glory. We praise you and give you glory for every single good thing that have happened in this church and in the lives of people in the past 12 months. Of all things, we just heard many people gave their life to the Lord last week. I also realize, Father, some of us will continue to process emotional scars, pain and loss into the new year. May you be merciful to them so that they can move forward in this family trip that we are embarking on for 2018. As we gather together, give us the ability to perceive what you have been doing all along in this church and in this community. Our Heavenly Father, give us a renewed sense of your plans and purpose so that we may see where the path lies that you have laid out for us to move ahead. Would you give us strength to leave what is behind at the foot of the cross and to forge forward to what you are getting ready to do? Help us to deal with the baggage of the past and to approach the future with unhindered open hands, raised in adoration and worship of you as you lead us forward, our Father, and we love you. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I didn't want us to close this time together at the end of the year by not giving you the opportunity to make a decision to embrace the change that God is doing in your life. Perhaps church is the new thing that God is doing in your life. Maybe he wants you to be involved deeper in, in the life of the church. Perhaps this is something new to you. I'd like for you to make that decision and see that it's already happening. You're here. It's already happening. And just, just keep walking that path. Perhaps for some of you, the change or the new thing that God is doing in your life is that he's calling you to a deeper walk with him through baptism. Maybe that's something that you need to consider um, in the coming year. We have announced earlier that there's baptism worship experience. There's baptism bash um, on February 11. Maybe that's the thing that you need to do uh, to step into the future, the change that God is doing in your life. I encourage you to do that. Um, whatever it is that you you have received from the Lord today, thank you, Pastor Ta, for, for preaching a, a strong word. He, he was on fire, right? And I pray that, that our response will all be to the glory of God to obey, to, to really receive what God is going to do in our lives, right? Amen? Amen. And, and I, I this is what I believe, and I'm praying this for all of us, that the season of change is coming in our life, and it's all for His glory and for your good. He's not going to change you to hurt you. He's going to change you to make you an even better person. Amen? And that's our claim and our prayer. Thank you for joining us at Mosaic Church. If you have been blessed by today's message, or if you have made the decision to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, please let us know about it. Email us at mosaicloyd at gmail.com. We would love to hear from you. If you wish to know more about our church, you may visit us online at www.mosaicloyd.com. God bless you. See you again next week.